Hi everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today we have a very special video. Right here in this box is the very first free, free art supply ever sent to me by a company to try out to see what I think. So today we're going to open this box and we're going to try out what's inside and we're going to see what we think. Come on in and let's get going. Okay, so we're going to open this and see what's inside. This is, like I said, the very first free art supply that has ever been sent to me. And it was really exciting. It's like Christmas. Or my birthday, especially since I don't have to pay for anything. I was really, really, really excited and surprised when I got the email. <laughs> I always thought I'd have to be a much bigger channel to get free stuff, so well, I see it. All right, are you guys ready? You want to see what's inside? Ta-da! <laughs> Paul Rubens sent me their 72 color artist soft pastel set to try out. Why don't we open this and do some swatching and draw something with them? I'm really excited. Come on, let's go do it. <laughs> okay, so here we are with our Paul Rubens soft pastels, and I'm going to try swatching them on this Canson sand grain paper, which I haven't tried yet, and I wanted to try and see what I think of it. Um, so we're going to swatch these, and then we'll do a demonstration drawing. So get your supplies together and come on in and let's get to work. I always recommend swatching your colors before using them for the first time. Um, you don't want to get into a situation like I did with my Sennelier soft pastels where you, <laughs> they're a lot softer than you were expecting and then you fill up the tooth of your paper too quickly. Although to be fair, I, I did swatch those. Okay. Let's see, let's, uh, let's go like this. And we'll start from here. So these are very soft. They go down very smoothly. They're not as soft as the Sennelier. Um, I think I would compare them maybe to Rembrandt's or even Unison. That's a very beautiful color right there. Let's make sure I have enough room to go all the way across on here. I'm liking this paper too so far. It's it's actually really rough feeling. I was actually surprised. It's much rougher than any of the other unsanded papers that I've tried so far. Oh, I need a rag. These colors are really vibrant and beautiful. Ooh, this one's super soft. This one almost feels like a Sennelli. That's a really pretty color right there, too. There's lots of yellows in this one. That one's a little harder. That feels more like a Rembrandt or a Unison. Uh, Paul Rubens, the company, was kind enough to send me a light fastness chart for this as well, and I will print it out and show it at the end of the video so you can take a screenshot of it. I thought that was really nice. That's one of the things I worry about with pa pastels is whether or not they're light fast. These are really creamy and smooth and beautiful. I'm actually really, really pleased with these. Maybe I'll speed up the rest of this here 
and put some nice relaxing music with it and then I will be back in a minute to see how they blend and talk a little bit about color theory and then to do our demonstration drawing. So here are all the colors swatched out. Um, I'm really enjoying these reds and pinks. I'm thinking I'd maybe like to do something with some poppies. So I said I would talk a little bit about color theory. So this is like a standard color wheel that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere. And one side on mine is a guide to mixing colors and then this side is for color schemes for your work that you're working on. I either work in a complementary, a split complementary, or sometimes an analogous color palette. So analogous would be when they're next to each other. So here if you had like violet, red, violet, and red that would be an analogous um, if I'm talking about red of poppies, then the complementary color for it would be this. I actually find that to be a little harsh, these two opposite each other. Um, so I would either pick the red and the more yellowy green or the red and the more bluey green, um, depending on what kind of mood I'm going for, which is uh, a split complementary. Um, I don't have that problem with like a orange and blue complementary or a purple and yellow, but for some reason the red right opposite the bright green seems to bother me. So if you were doing like red poppies and your poppies were like this color and like this color for a highlight and a little bit of light on the end and let's see looking at these colors I'd probably end up going for more of these muted greens all right let's do this and hope for the best I guess I'm gonna go wash my hands so they're nice and clean and get ready to get working okay so I've got a piece of white pastel matte taped down um, and all the links to everything I'll be using will be linked down below. This is the reference photo I'm using today. Here, let's turn this off. This is from Pixabay. This will be linked down below as well. And while I sketch this out, I'm going to have it flat. But when I start working, I'm going to move you and put it upright on my easel. I'm going to pick one of my Carbothello pastel pencils to sketch this out with. Um, this color will be good. Okay, so just really lightly we're going to start by putting in the basic shapes. The nice thing about pastels is that they're very loose. So if you're trying to get more of an impressionistic-like style, this is a great way to do it, as I've talked about before. Okay, I think that sketch is done. It's time to transfer over to the easel. Okay, let's start by blocking in some of these colors here.
These are laying down very well on the pastel mat. So I didn't do any sort of underpainting for this. Um, I thought about using my dark indigo ink tense block just for the centers of the poppies, but I didn't think it would be worthwhile to pull it out and then wait for it to dry and everything. Um, and this ended up being more of like a study than a finished thing anyway, so it was fine. So I went right in with the Paul Rubin Soft Pastels and I just started layering and blending and layering and blending. And um, the Paul Rubin's Pastels, they laid down very nicely on the pastel mat. They blended very nicely on it. Um, it was very easy to fill the tooth of the paper with my finger as I blended. I really wanted to do a painting of some bright, cheerful poppies. Um, so I found this reference picture on Pixabay and I wanted it to be a little more loose and almost like watercolors. And I think I did a good job with that on here. The reds in this box lended themselves well to the colors of the poppies. The only color I was really missing was, like I said, a dark neutral, which is not just a Paul Rubens thing. Most sets are missing those. Um, and, I mean, maybe I would have liked a little more variation in the greens, but this was just a basic set, not a landscape set. So, you know, you can't ask for everything. <laughs> so, like I've mentioned before on here, if you're going to do any blending, you want to do that in your early on layers. Um, by the time you get to your final layers, you want to make sure that you don't do any more blending it what makes the pastel super vibrant is the crystalline structure of the pigments in the pastels which can be crushed when you blend them and that's fine in the early layers to just get your base layer of pigment down but once you get to those final layers you want that unblended pastel to really shine through and make your work pop and it's especially important when you're doing something so rich and vibrant as these poppies are. So now I'm putting in uh, the dark purpley color that came with the set. It was almost dark enough but not quite. In fact you'll see me come through at the end with the black and I often will say that I don't like to work with just plain black because it can look flat but if you layer a color either over it or under it that sort of negates that flatness of a plain black. So you want to put a deep purple or a deep blue or even a deep dark green under your black and blend that well together. And then in your final layer, put a dab more of the purple in this case on top of those two that are blended together. And that will negate that whole dullness of using just black. So that's a way to get around that if you don't have a huge full set to start, which is actually how it was for me for many years when I started with soft pastels. I just had to make do with what I had and that's how you get good. Okay, so everything up to this stage has been only the Paul Rubin soft pastels. Um, I think they've performed beautifully. They're a little harder than um, Unison or Sennelier, so that is great for blending and not filling up your layers too quickly. Um, I am going to bring in my pastel pencils now to just put on a few fine, final finishing touches, which I would do for any soft pastel that I was working on if the paper will accept more layers at that point. So that's how I like to do to work. I like to get it mostly done and then do some more details with the soft pastel pencils. So that'll be a test here to see if I can get the pastel pencils to go over the Paul Rubens pastels. I could not get them to go over the Sennelier pastels, which um, I kind of expected to happen. So let's see what happens with the Paul Rubens. So I've got both my Stabilo Carbothello and my Faber Castile Pit pastel pencils. I'm not sure which I'm going to use or if it's gonna be a combination of both. Okay, I'm going in with this and let's see what happens. So I was able to get a few layers of pencil over these base layers. Um, there were a few spots where it was a little too thick, especially near the center of the flower because I had already done quite a few layers there. Um, it worked great in the grasses and for detailing the petals. 
And I think it definitely helped bring a little bo- bit more depth to the piece. Um, I did have a darker green in the pastel pencils, which I think helped a lot with the grass. Um, so I was glad that I had that. The reds were very similar to the reds that were already in the Paul Rubin set, and I just wanted to get some finer details into the petals that I wasn't able to get with the big chunky pastels. So I actually didn't do a a whole ton with the pencils, just a little bit here and there, and I will come back in a minute and go over this with some more of the Paul Rubin's pastels so I get that really bright, vibrant color that I was talking about earlier as my last layer so that the piece really has that sparkle and pop that I love so much that you can only get with a good quality soft pastel. Okay, so this is just about done. I was able to get a lot more detail with the pastel pencil than I would have with Sennelier or even Unison, so that was nice. I think I'm gonna go through with my, oops, Paul Rubens pastels and put in a few last details and I think we will call that good. And then I will be back at the end for the tape peel and my final thoughts. So I think I can definitely recommend these Paul Rubens soft pastels. They're beautiful, they're buttery, they're creamy, they're soft. They weren't so soft that I couldn't do my layers of pastel pencil over them. Um, they didn't crumble or fall apart at all. I had zero problem with that. I have had, like, especially like the Sennelier will sometimes just crumble in your fingers when you pick them up, but there was zero problem with that. The colors were really vibrant. I didn't have any of that chalky, gritty feeling that you can get with the lower quality pastels. I don't think these are lower quality. I think they're very, very well done and definitely a higher quality artist grade and not student grade pastel for sure. Um, I really enjoyed working them with them and I will again. Okay, so I'm just putting in a little bit of finishing touches here with a tiny touch of the black in a few areas. Uh, I was very happy with this set. The one thing that was missing was a dark neutral, um, which is not just a Paul Rubens thing. Most sets are missing a dark neutral. Um, The black is working fine in this case. Um, It's, I found when you're buying sets, it's very hard to get a set with a a dark neutral. So I wasn't surprised. It's, It's not a surprise and I wouldn't, it's not a big deal. You can always just pick one up separately the next time you order from like Blick Art Materials or something. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is still a little, I'm still a little sick. <laughs> but hey, at least I'm up and creating something, right? Okay, so here is a good spot now to step back and take a look and see what I think. Okay, it's time for the tape peel. Okay, so here's my finished drawing of some beautiful poppies on a summer day using the Paul Rubens 72 set. Here, let's get this over. Using the Paul Rubens set of Artist Soft Pastels 72 colors. And I have to say, I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought these performed great. Um, they were a little less soft than the Unison and the Sennelier, but that made it so that I was able to do some details with my Carbothello Stabilo pencils, which I actually like quite a bit. Um, they didn't make too much dust. They adhered well to the paper. The colors are really vibrant and rich. The only drawback, like I said, is there is not a dark neutral in the set, but again, 
it's extremely rare to get a dark neutral in a set. I have just usually just been buying mine on my own. Um, the closest would be this color right here, which was this one. And it looks more bluey purple here than it did in the drawing. In the drawing, it was a, a brighter purple than I thought it was based on the swatch, but it was pretty close and I combined that with a little of the black and together I think it worked out pretty well. I hope you enjoyed following along with this poppy drawing. Again, the uh, photo for this, if you want to try to follow along, is down in the description. It's linked down there. And until next time, happy creating! Mm -hmm.